This is the Malay Archipelago, home to the world's largest archipelagic country, Indonesia, a nation made up of thousands of islands. To be specific, it has 17,000 islands. Among them are two islands, Bali and Lombok. Though only 35 kilometers apart, the living organisms on these islands are as different as night and day. On Bali, you'll find Asian animals such as elephants, tigers, woodpeckers, and rhinos. However, when you cross over to Lombok, you'll see an entirely different world with Australian species such as kangaroos, cockatoos, and koalas. Even the tree species, aquatic life, and birds are completely distinct between these two islands. What's even more fascinating is that despite the short distance, no animals from either island migrate to the other. For mammals, it makes sense because they can't cross water easily. But what's surprising is that fish and even birds, which can fly anywhere, also remain confined to their respective sides. But why is this so? Well, the answer was discovered by Alfred Russell Wallace in 1859. He found that there is an invisible line dividing Bali, and Lombok, and extending all the way to the southern Philippines. On the west side of the line, Bali, the creatures are entirely different from those on the east side, Lombok, and neither side's creatures cross over. This discovery by Wallace was so significant that it gave Charles Darwin a strong foundation for his theory of evolution, which he later published in his book On the Origin of Species. But how exactly did Wallace discover this invisible line, and what makes it so unique that it keeps the ecosystems of the two islands separate? Let's explore. The discovery of Wallace's line was, in fact, accidental. Let's start from the beginning. Alfred Russell. Wallace was born on January 8, 1823, into a poor family in Wales, which prevented him from completing his formal education. However, as he grew older, he befriended Henry Walter Bates, a naturalist, and this friendship sparked Wallace's interest in nature. During that time, collecting and trading specimens, such as insects and birds, was a common practice. These specimens were sent to England's Royal Geographical Society in exchange for money. So, in 1848, Wallace and Bates decided to travel to Brazil to collect specimens for research and trade while pursuing their passion. After arriving in Brazil, the two worked together for years before parting ways. Wallace ventured into the Amazon River region, mapping the area and collecting specimens of butterflies, birds, and insects. Alongside this, he also sought to solve the mystery of species origins. After four years of collecting specimens, Wallace boarded a ship to return to England, but disaster struck when the ship caught fire, destroying almost all his research papers and specimens. Fortunately, another ship rescued him, and he managed to save some of his research papers from the fire. Using these saved documents, Wallace published several articles and two books, which impressed the Royal Geographical Society. They funded his next journey, this time to the Malay Archipelago, a region encompassing thousands of islands in Indonesia and the Philippines. In 1854, Wallace arrived in the Malay Archipelago and spent eight years exploring its many islands, collecting over 125,000 specimens, including 5,000 species unknown to Western science. During this journey, Something astonishing happened. After collecting specimens from Bali, Wallace traveled to Lombok, just 35 kilometers away. To his amazement, he noticed that the species on Lombok were completely different from those on Bali. Bali was home to Asian animals like elephants, tigers, and woodpeckers, while Lombok had Australian species such as kangaroos, koalas, and cockatoos. Wallace was amazed and began studying the area further. He discovered that not only were the animals different, but the trees, fish, and birds were also unique to their respective islands. Wallace concluded that an invisible biogeographical line separated the ecosystems of these two islands. In 1859, this imaginary line was named Wallace's Line by T. H. Huxley in honor of Wallace. While Wallace discovered the line, he couldn't determine its exact cause. The concept of plate tectonics, which explains this phenomenon, wasn't developed until 1967, means the concept of plate tectonics was discovered 50 years after Wallace's death. Today, we know that the continents were not always in their current positions. Plate tectonic movements caused the separation of land masses, creating the distinct ecosystems we see today. Wallace hypothesized that in the past, the islands west of the line were connected to Asia, while those to the east were connected to Australia. Rising sea levels then submerged the land, isolating the species and leading to their unique evolutionary paths. Now Wallace's hypothesis was proven absolutely correct. As for why birds and fish don't cross the Wallace line, the explanation lies in their behavior and the environment. The birds in this region are non-migratory, meaning they don't travel travel long distances. Meanwhile, strong ocean currents prevent fish from swimming across. Wallace's discovery of this line was a turning point. Though he initially set out to study species origins, his findings contributed significantly to Darwin's theory of evolution. In fact, upon making his discoveries, Wallace immediately wrote to Darwin, sharing his findings. This helped Darwin resolve some doubts and ultimately propose his theory of evolution, explaining how life on Earth began and how plants, animals, and humans came to be.